talk a little bit about um, trials? So, so kind of understanding how, how the mechanism will work. So where are you with trials? So you recently got some funding. Congratulations on that. Yeah, could you talk uh, kind of where you are on, the, on your trials? Yeah, so we're currently working through the preclinical development pathway, and I'd say we're, we're still a few years away from being able to put this into, into patients. But one of the key areas that we're looking at early on is the ability to support those patients uh, that have the most severe form of thymic deficiency, all the way through to those that have some form of thymic deficiency from either genetics, environmental, um, treatment for cancer, certain drugs, uh, folks that have even been thymectomized. There is quite a spectrum of, uh, of patients that we can address. And that all starts with you know, that really critical population where even though there's an FDA approved therapy, um, it's difficult to get that therapeutic. So again, what if we could have an off the shelf approach and be able to provide the cells for that very sick population very shortly after diagnosis. So those are some of the areas we're looking at from a clinical trial perspective over the next few years as we develop the technology to the point where we can uh, start those kind of first in human studies. Where are you in kind of preclinical? Yeah, so we're working, we started with these um, these quote unquote uh, nude mice, nude animals that uh, actually are a perfect model for athymia because they, due to genetics, lack the thymus. And that's what actually creates this immune deficient model. <laughs> and it's one of the most commonly used animal models in, in the whole world. And it happens to perfectly mimic what we're looking at. So we started with those uh, validated and tested technologies after we really optimized our process. And more recently, we've transitioned into something called humanized animals. Basically, we're able to take these animals, update their immune system, give them human, say, core blood, bone marrow, and create a human-like immune system to test the effects of then implanting our cell therapy and our new thymus into these animals. And what we're seeing is, indeed, we're able to utilize this process and generate new human T-cells in these animals. And now what we're doing is really interrogating, uh, interrogating in many levels of detail, kind of downstream the function, consequence, safety, efficacy, robustness of those resulting cells and how could they respond to, you know, the stimuli and the insults that you would see during normal life. So where do, where do these cells get put in the mouse and, and where would you put them in a human? Right. Would they, go yeah. the would they go where the thymus is or would you put them somewhere else? So this is one of the fast, another fascinating aspect of the science and technology where, again, we get to fall in the, in the uh, uh, build on the shoulders of, of giants in the field where with that primary thymus therapy, it turns out they just surgically engraft it into the thigh muscle. <laughs> uh, in a surgical procedure, they make little incisions and they're able to insert these slices of thymic tissue. And uh, the, the, the rationale behind that originally was, hey, easy access, you can biopsy it, you can explant it if you ever need to, and it's very well, well vascularized. And that essentially is what you need for the thymus to function is a good vascular bed. For us in the preclinical animal models, um, it's established practice to kind of stick these into something called the subrenal capsule. But since then, that initial validation, we've also started to test out muscle transplant sites. And what we're seeing is that that seems to work just as well. So therefore, we would likely follow kind of that same clinically feasible transplant location of a, a skeletal muscle of the thigh, something along those lines. You talked about a clinical trial around 2025. Does that sound kind of right? Or is that... That, that's, that's probably the earliest point at which we would move into, into clinical trials, you know, balancing urgency of the need with making sure that we have the you know, safest, most efficacious product possible. What do you see as kind of the long-term goal? I mean, would you see that you would be able to like generate uh, imu uh, thymic, thym I, I guess, thymuses for people and, and you, could, you could just go and buy a thymus and have it put into your leg? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the, you know, the, the, the grand long-term vision of the technology and be able to ultimately bridge it into possibly everyone that has um, has a need for uh, immune reconstitution is either an off the shelf, you know, thymic uh, cell product, or you know, when the technologies and the regulatory process is in place, even potentially an autologous version of that, where you'd be able to, upon turning say 50, 60, 70, get a injection of these cells into say your thigh muscle, 
and then be able to utilize that to really bolster your ability to defend yourself against, you know, pathogens, cancer, uh, really have robust responses to vaccinations, all part of uh, having healthier aging over time. And the other unique thing with our approach is unlike the primary tissue, you know, we don't know the answer to this right now, but if you needed to redose the material every five, 10 years with this approach, we could. About 75% of people are magnesium deficient. In fact, magnesium is involved in more than 300 chemical processes inside your body. So a lot of different things can start to go wrong if you are deficient, such as trouble sleeping, low energy, irritability, and anxiety. To avoid being deficient, you can supplement daily with magnesium and experience a number of positive health benefits like better sleep, more energy, stronger bones, healthier blood pressure, and a calmer, more stable mood. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I take Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough has the full spectrum of all seven types of magnesium. One of the important reasons we chose it is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, and free of chemicals and fillers. Visit magnesiumbreakthrough.com modern and use the code modern10 to get your Magnesium Breakthrough with a 10% discount. Thank you for your support. Do you think you could use the same technology for other organs, right? Apart from the thymic organ, like could you could you use this to build livers or anything else? It, indeed. And there, there's a, a range of different folks, companies, groups, academic labs that are applying kind of similar concepts and technologies in the stem cell biology space to generate a range of tissues and organs. You mentioned liver. Some of the ones that are already in clinical trials and showing promising results are things like um, pancreatic uh, beta islet cells um, to treat type 1 diabetes or uh, dopaminergic neurons to treat Parkinson's disease. And what we're seeing, going back to an earlier question you had, is there's a rising tide as there's additional clinical evidence that these approaches do indeed work and are safe and can help patients that then enables additional, you know, stem cell drive cell therapies make a difference in patients' lives. Thymus is one of them that we think is critically important, but this approach can unlock a range of other tissues and organs that, hey, as we age, we lose many, many different things. What if we come in, could come in and really regenerate the spectrum of what you're missing to help you uh, age in a healthier way? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it sounds like really, uh, you know, very promising. And uh, and the thymus, because you can reprogram it not to reject itself, seems to be actually the easy one, one of the easier ones. Oh, well, I don't know about easier, but um, more more straightforward. Because the others would would it would be better if it would be autologous, right? Whereas yours, because it's a thymus, you can program it to say, you know, trust me. Um, it, it it is one of these unique tissues where. Um, because of how it just naturally functions in the human body, it, it can overcome tolerance barriers by training new cells that are tolerant to, to, to the thymus or the donor source. So very, very unique, unlike say a beta islet cell that that's not its function in the body uh, it is to create tolerance is to, you know, generate insulin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, kind of on the side. So have you been following um, Dr. Faye's trim trial? Cause he's also, um, regenerating the thymus with growth hormone. I just wondered what your thoughts were on on that. Yeah, no, it's it, the the results have been fascinating from the early work through to uh, what he and his colleagues are doing now, and it's certainly a a, a really nice uh, uh, kind of uh, a PLC to an extent that hey, when one comes in in age individuals and um, does some degree of thymic regeneration, you're able to improve immune function. Um, biological age as measured by the different methodologies that um, they study uh, and, and overall possibly provide better better health for individuals. Um, it's, it's, it's a fascinating set of work and certainly <laughs> lends credits to, to our argument as well. Um, in, in our approach, I think what possibly makes us unique is, you know, beyond a certain point, it likely could be hard to reconstitute innate function uh, from the thymus. And our solution to that is to say, well, what if we could come in and actually deliver basically a, a new thymus uh, in a very robust fashion to overcome such an issue? So mm -hmm. I, I think there will be a role for these different technologies ultimately uh, across the spectrum of aging disease. 
uh, but certainly the, the results there are quite encouraging and, and we want to continue following that over time. Right. Uh, yes. I just thinking that, you know, generally I'm told like by the time you get to 50, there's almost nothing left of the thymus. So it seems it would be difficult to get it to significantly regenerate at that point. Um, and it, you know, it really needs, yeah, Possibly. it probably, probably needs like a new version put in. Is there anything that I have not asked you about that I should have done? Do you think? No, I, I think this has been been quite quite fun to talk about the the spectrum of work that we do. And what I would I would simply say to um, the folks watching is that, hey, continue watching the space, continue asking those difficult questions, and collectively we are going to learn about how to uh, make new products that are going to be beneficial not only for a range of really unmet needs in immunology, but potentially enable a, a, a future where we can utilize these in uh, almost everybody to provide uh, folks an opportunity at, at healthier aging. These are tough technologies. Uh, there's a heck of a lot of science and work that goes into it, um, but we we you know rely on the efforts of our team and also the support of our investors and different funders to realize that that grand ambitious vision. Uh, and if folks want to join us in that endeavor, uh, we would welcome them reaching out to, to talk about how, how we could do that together. Okay, excellent. Uh, yeah, so that's a good point. So where can people find out about your latest work and uh, follow you? And do you pub are you publishing uh, on like PubMed or anywhere your results? Our scientific founders have published uh, mm -hmm. a, a myriad and breadth mm -hmm. of, uh, of the foundational work in the space. We as a company are, are very much focused on kind of driving this into the clinic and onto, onto the market. But as we, you know, decipher exciting science and mechanism, uh, I, I think over time we, we can consider uh, publishing results that might be of use to the greater uh, scientific community. Um, in terms of following our work, uh, folks are welcome to check out our website, thymine.com, uh, our LinkedIn page, um, and also reach out through those different channels to, to discuss if there are ways that we can collaborate and uh, support each other in uh, helping to better address uh, other aging and uh, reconstituting the human immune system. Okay, excellent. So uh, Dr. Wang, thank you so much for joining us today. It was uh, great talking to you and it sounds really exciting technology that you're working on. Yeah, great. Well, Richard, thank you so much for the invitation, uh, for being willing to talk things through together and for your excellent questions. Okay, thank you.